A big thanks to Napoleon Grills for sponsoring this episode. I'm going to show you how you can make the most juicy, tender and delicious rib roast you ever had using one of the most ingenious techniques. There are a lot of genius people in the world. People that come up with ideas that are changing the way we live forever. Think about Elon Musk changing the way we drive cars, travel to Mars, or even way back. Think about those Egyptians building pyramids and doing all these crazy things without the tools that we have available nowadays. Now, what have you been doing? Have you changed the world lately? Well, I hope to change the world because I've got something ingenuitive that is going to change the way you cook rib roast forever. However, big disclaimer here, this is not my idea. I saw this somewhere and I don't know who made it, who came up with the idea, but I saw it and it stuck with my mind and it's been sitting here for months and I was thinking, why doesn't everybody do it? Why? changing that today. And I bet you, if you see how, you're gonna do it too. It's like no doubt in my mind. So, it all starts with a big hunk of meat. <laughs> big fat rib roast, look at that beauty. A lot of meat, good amount of fat. That's the starting point. This is a beautiful Irish grass-fed rib roast. There's a lot of dark color in the meat and that means flavor. We also got some intermuscular fat, but it's not overwhelming. And that's perfect for a roast. Now the first thing that I wanna do is trim off the excess fat and the silver skin that's laying on top. You can only keep the parts of the fat that sit on top if there's no silver skin underneath. Because that silver skin is gonna give you a nasty experience when you're eating your slices out of this roast. Once you got it all removed, it should look like this. I like to use a butcher's hook to remove the silver skin that's sitting on top and the fat. Of course, I'm gonna use my knife to get the last bits and pieces off. Once that's done, it's time to tie it up. And this is a very easy process. Just make a knot on one bone and then wrap the butcher's twine around the roast. Going from the back to the front to the back to the front until you reach the end. Of course, I gotta make sure that it's secured enough and that the twines are spread out evenly. And now it's time to make some seasoning. For a rib roast, you always want something special. So I'm gonna start with one part light sea salt. Then comes half a part ground black pepper, one part onion powder, a quarter part garlic powder, and a quarter part chili flakes. I'm gonna mix that all up and then I'm gonna apply it to our beautiful roast. Wow, the fragrances that come off this rub when applying it to the meat is insane. Look at this beautiful roast. It's ready to go. We got beautiful meat, beautiful flavors with seasoning on top. And it's just sitting here waiting for me to start cooking it. However, I've got this ingenious plan to attach this spoon to this roast and create a self-basting roasting machine on this rotisserie. But as you can see, it won't rotate. It's just too big. So I gotta take off a large part of these bones. The second problem is I wanna attach this spoon to this roast, which of course is not like a logical thing that would sit. So there are many ways and which one is the right ways? For instance, we could just stick this in and you would have a self-basting device. Or we could have it sit on top of the bone and then connect it to the bone. But which one is the best way to do it? I don't know, you don't know, because this is not a thing yet. So we got to figure this out together. And that's what we're going to do. First job, Cut off the bones. The first problem is very easy to solve. I'm just gonna take a saw, cut off the bones to the length that I think they're gonna fit, and then I'm giving the tips of the bones to my garbage disposal machine. And I'm not sure if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna place the spoons directly in front of the bones, hoping that the bones will give the spoons support. I'm gonna line them up as proper as I can, making sure that all of them are straight and getting the same amount of scoops and letting them point towards the meat side of the roast so that they're basing the actual meat and not the back of the bones. Now it's time to skewer it onto the spit and place it on the barbecue and see if it works. Positioning the skewer is very tricky. I gotta get it just right so that the meat won't touch the basing juices and the spoons actually get a good spoonful of it. 
And now it's the moment of truth. Let's find out if this works. There we go, let's set it in. This is just a test. I'm not setting it up officially. Let's see first if it clears the back. That's the most important part. If it clears the back, we're golden. Uh, there we go. Yes! That's why measuring is important in barbecue. It fits like a glove. Now I want to see if it actually is going to, like the meat is clearing the basting fluids that's going to be in a tray. And then the scoop's got to go through it. Yep. <laughs> it works. It totally works. I, it's like, there's like one minor detail. I want this fluid basting dripping pan to sit a little higher so it scoops a little more. But in general, this is freaking awesome. I wonder if we just put the grill grate underneath this dripping tray if it works. If that's gonna solve it already, I'm gonna be laughing. All right, all right. I'm happy, I'm really happy. It's gonna work, but I want to just do another test, another grill grate. I wanna see if we can raise it another grill grate. Because the better the scoops are, the more basting sauce we're gonna get on our meat. Oh, that's absolutely perfect. This is what I'm looking for. I'm just gonna tweak the spoons a little more because I'm just like freaking out right now. This is so awesome. But this is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm gonna start by turning on all of the burners. I'm gonna set them to the lowest position. Second step is loading the tray up with butter. Now, of course, you see that I don't have much room to work with, so the butter's gotta melt as we put it in. Now I'm gonna slowly let these big chunks of butter melt in their bath. And I'm gonna keep on adding butter until we have enough for our rib roast to baste itself. Once the butter is melted, I'm turning on only the side burners and the back burner. And I'm gonna let it run until it forms a beautiful crust like this. Now I wanna add more spices to the crust. So I'm gonna sprinkle in some dried parsley and some dried oregano. It's gonna slowly build up a layer with the butter on top of our roast. And to make sure we cook this thing to perfection, I'm going to put in my meter thermometer. This thing is absolutely perfect for rotisseries since it doesn't have a wire. And also the meter thermometer is going to help me keep the lid closed because I can keep an eye on my temperatures without having to open it. And now it's just a waiting game. Trust the holy triangle. Butter, grills, and human engineering. Oh, <laughs> that looks absolutely insane. Look at the bubbles of the butter. This looks so good. It's just mind blowing. That's the magic of butter. And ah, this is so cool. Now, and again, I can't take full credit for it, but hey man, I'm taking credit for this roast. Look at it. It's golden brown. It's got beautiful colors. It's self basting. Insane, you can see the butter dripping down from all sides. You can see it building up flavors. And of course, I added more spices to it to build layers and layers and layers of flavor. Let's take it off and let it rest. I've taken an absolute beautiful piece of beef, seasoned it with a really tasty steak rub, and fitted it with five spoons. Put it on the rotisserie and let it rotate until it turned absolutely gorgeous. Golden brown, delicious, juicy. Now making something that looks good is all good and well, but what does it taste like? Is it really as good as it looks? Now, of course, we all know butter makes things better. Just like bacon, butter is one of those things that makes you smile, that makes you happy, that can make you cry, it can make you laugh, but let's just find out. <laughs> I don't want to be the evil genius, but right, I'm definitely a genius. I want a big piece. I'm, I'm slicing it off, though, 
I mean, I want to be more humane, but it's still going to be a big piece. I can't go, I can't go any better. So make this is too good. Too good. It's a pinnacle. I, I can't. I. It's too good. Ah. I don't know about using your best um, silverware. Probably not that good of an idea. It's a nice little trick, but it eventually it's not gonna change everything. So if you don't wanna go that route, just stick a butter bath underneath your rib roast. Give it a try. It's like, oh, real man never come back. If you quit, I'm always here, brother. I never leave, I never quit. If you quit, you walk away and you never come back. Instead, you give me false hope that you quit, <laughs> and then you, you come back and eat all my food again. What we're doing here, compared to what Elon Musk does, is like way more significant. I just had to say it. There are no such yeah. thing as rockets that uh -huh. drive themselves. Yeah. Self-driving cars. <laughs> but who needs that? <laughs> who needs Self that? Self-basting. That's what you need. Autopilot on a grill. Mm. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Mm. 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 Tell them, Morton. Mm. See you guys next time. Hey, smakelijk. Keep on grilling. And I want to thank all the Patreons and the YouTube members. See ya and... Hey, smakelijk. Hey, smakelijk. <laughs> <laughs> click on the link, please. Click, click on that video.